Hi guys, and welcome to Go Roughly Around the World. Greg and I are riding around the world with our German Shepherd Moxie here on the back of my bike in her canine moto cockpit to raise $100,000 for the nonprofit Girl Up. So today we're coming to you from Comalcalco, Mexico in Tabasco State, and we want to tell you about the latest bit uh, or addition to our filming kit, the Moxie Cam. So this is the Insta360 Go 2. And so this was a camera that we selected because it's really light. It has fantastic stabilization. The quality is somewhere between HD and not exactly 4K, somewhere in the middle there. And it's just a really discreet camera that Moxie can have on the top of her goggles so that she can wear this when we're riding. Now keep in mind that the Moxie cam setup is excellent for motorcycling, but it's not only for motorcycling. Hiking, climbing, kayaking, you name it, right? The Go 2 is waterproof, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And anytime you want your dog's perspective, I mean, this setup is going to give it to you. They have to accept the Rec Specs goggles, otherwise all you're going to see is them, you know, fighting with their face. Mm -hmm. The MoxiCam is actually an Insta360 Go 2 camera that we've secured here on the top of Moxie's Rexpex riding goggles. So there's a lot of camera contenders out there for the MoxiCam, but the reason we picked the Go 2 is because it really is one of the smallest, lightest cameras that still has good resolution and stabilization. Probably one of the most common cameras that this might get compared to or as an option would be the Hero 11 Mini that's quite new. It's really no comparison in the sense that the Hero 11 Mini is a lot better of a camera, mm -hmm. but it is a whole lot heavier, and that is not something that's going to be comfortable for your dog to wear over an extended period. Oh, yes, I'm It's a great camera, but there are some drawbacks. But let's get to that in a second. Let's talk about how we actually mounted it to her goggles. Okay, so real simple. The Go 2 comes with this swivel clip. So it's like a clip piece that has a swivel connected to it, these teeth, and you can adjust it as you'd like. So all we did was drill a couple of holes into the, the lenses of the Rec Specs, pass some zip ties through it and around, and that really locks it in place. Now, you want to be sure to do it on the outside like this and not too close in because otherwise it will slide. Like this, you've got a really sturdy mount. So the Insta360 Go 2, it's magnetic on the back. So it comes in like this carrying charging case that you can also use and it just clucks right in like it's a really strong magnet and it does the same thing for the mount here so you can just put it in and it'll stay so that's fantastic when you're riding and you don't have to do anything but we have noticed that moxie because she's behind me here sometimes when it's hot out or she doesn't really want to be wearing her goggles she'll rub against me and then the lip of the lens will get caught in my jacket and then it'll come out. You have to put a lot of force to take it out, but it has happened a couple of times and it's dropped on the floor. So what we do instead is Greg has come up with like an ingenious solution here um, of using a twist tie. So you're gonna be between the clip piece and the swivel piece. And it just requires feeding it in a, a little bit. So this guy pops in, wrap it around, and then all you need to do at this point is just close it like you would around a loaf of bread. Yeah. And so then when you put it on her, now nothing is going to be touching her. If you look at her from the side, nothing is, is rubbing against her. She's got the padding of the goggles still right up against her head. There's no zip ties or anything bothering her. And so she doesn't really notice much of a difference. One thing I would say about the whole uh, twist tie uh, issue here is you want to make sure that it's not covering the light. There's a very small indicator here that will tell you when it's recording. Um, and obviously I'm looking at it through my mirror here when we're riding. I'm turning back and I'm turning it on. I just, it's, it's good to make sure that you can actually see when it's recording. Otherwise you think you're recording and you're not. When you actually press the button, there is a vibration. I wish that that wasn't the case. It does help when I've got my gloves on to actually feel that. But Moxie, she doesn't love that it feeling gives her of vibration. A start, right? Yeah, I think it's just weird, a weird sensation on her head. But there's not much you can do about that. You can't turn that aspect off. 
we purchased a set that had a couple of additional lenses, which was really useful for us as we were testing this and it dropped on the ground as we were riding. So uh, we've had a couple of cases now where she did pop it off. This was pre-twist uh, tie, tie and it popped off uh, at slow speed, fell on the ground and we both had to immediately pull over and I had to hoof it back. So you can see how having the additional lenses would be important. Yeah. This camera is great when it comes to stabilization. Moxie's moving all over the place, but when you look at the footage, it's actually really smooth and it's comparable to, to a GoPro. The one thing that I don't like about it is it has internal memory. It's not like it's a GoPro that has a card, it has its own memory. So we got the 32 gig version and it goes up to a 64 gig. And yeah, we really should have gotten the higher capacity one because what ends up happening is it, it fills up really quickly. Um, especially when you're filming at the high quality uh, footage that we are. There are options. It comes with an app that, that you can sort of set it all up and it tell you like what happens when you press it once, or you press it twice, or you hold it down. So there is, um, and there is a safeguard there where you can set it that it'll say you'll only, if you forget to turn it off after five minutes, it'll turn off or 10 minutes or 15 or whatever it is. So it doesn't eat up all of your storage. But the issue is because it has this internal memory, you need to connect it to the app on your phone. And then you have to have them side by side in order to transfer the footage from the camera to your phone. And it gets pulled off and goes directly to your phone storage. And then if you don't have enough phone storage, you can't export it. Then you're sort of stuck with it uh, on, on the app and that's all you've got. And then you have to wait until you've offloaded stuff from your, from your phone. Then once that whole process happens, then you have it on your phone. So you've got it sitting in your like photos app. From there, you're gonna have to offload it to your computer or something else in order to free up space on your phone so that you can do this again. So it becomes really time consuming and it's not like it's just a one and done and you can forget it. You need to have the phone and the camera close to each other and you can't do anything else on your phone. The app needs to stay open in order to do the transfer. So we do find that in the middle of the day, we need to charge this guy because we get about maybe six to 10 videos of like three to five minutes on it um, before it dies or before the storage fills up. So then at lunchtime, I'm charging it in its little case here, which I have, it has a USB-C so I can just connect it and I have it in my tank bag and so it charges in here. But then when it comes to transferring the data, then I need to do the whole thing with the app and, and transferring it and off. The and the transfer is a huge battery suck. Yeah. So it's a battery suck on my phone and on the camera itself. So then you've got to make sure that it's, this thing is plugged in and you got to keep it charging again after that. So in that sense, it's not like, it's not as easy as a GoPro would be where you can either swap out the, the battery or you can swap out the card. Now, given the shortcomings of the camera that Jess described, the fact that the transfer takes time, the battery charging is an issue, and you can't just swap out cards. If you've got the dollars to make the investment, if you uh, are doing sort of an around the world like we are and, you know, kind of anything goes in that respect, get two of them. Put it in for the morning and then swap out the other one for the afternoon and then you can do all of your sort of sorting and charging and everything in the evening at the campsite. So after sharing about all of the, the great things and the not so great things about this camera, why did we choose it? Why didn't we just go with a GoPro or something like that? mainly because it is just so light, you know? It's, Moxie is wearing this, this get, lets us have her perspective. She wouldn't be able to, she wouldn't handle having a GoPro mini on the top of her head. It would just be too much. And having a camera on any other part of her body, there's just too much movement with this dog for it to be stable enough. But this gives it a great place to mount it's easy, it's great, it got her first person point of view, which is what everybody loves to see. And it's just, it's an easy sort of camera to have. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope this gave you the overview you needed to make the right decision for what camera you want for your own dog when you're riding with them or doing other activities. Like we said, we really enjoy this one and we think that it's a good option for us. We'd love to hear what you guys think if you have this or if you have another setup, put it down in the comments below so that we can take a look as well. Don't forget to subscribe to us here on YouTube and at GoRoughly for Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you soon.